Today, we are going to test the power of a Chilean kite line because of a near tragedy that happened in my family. Mara and I, we lived in an apartment here in Sao Paulo. Helena, our daughter, was about three years old. We were getting out of the car with her in the building's parking lot, which was open. And she saw a kite that had fallen far away, and she ran after it. She thought the kite was very beautiful. I went along walking a bit behind her, and she ran ahead. Halfway there, I realized that the kite's string, it had gotten stuck on the wall, and it was stretched right at Helena's neck height. I managed to grab her. When there were about 20 centimeters left for her to pass her neck on the kite string that was full of cutting, the worst part is that I did some research, and I found out that accidents with cutting lines happen absolutely all the time. Just news from 2024 in a quick Google search. Eight-year-old child dies in Para after having neck cut by kite string with glass powder. Municipal guard has neck cut with Chilean line. Woman dies who had neck cut by Serral line in the federal district. Woman dies hit by Chilean line in Bajada Fluminense. Nurse has neck cut by kite string with glass powder in Teresina. Security guard dies from cut neck by kite string on Juan Paulo II Avenue. Chilean line kills motorcyclist in Greater Belo Horizonte. Sao Paulo records a 139% increase in outpatient care for kite-related accidents. Traffic accidents with several victims increase almost 30% in Minas. He took away the opportunity to see me grow up. Protests daughter who lost her father hit by a kite line with Serral. We've wanted to showcase the danger of these lines for a long time, but there's a problem. They're widely available for sale online. It's easy to find if you search in the neighborhood, but it's not only forbidden to buy, but also to transport, and we didn't want to make a mistake to show another mistake. Then now, at the beginning of December, exactly the same thing happened that had happened in my parking lot seven years ago here at Manuel do Mundo. A kite fell in our backyard, Lucas went to remove it, and guess what? There was a gray line that easily, easily cut our finger. Look at the little thing here. We managed to recover a good piece of the line. I don't know. There must be about eight meters here, more or less, and it's still very rough. In short, the line we couldn't buy, transport, or use for kites literally fell from the sky. So the first thing I wanted to do here, since you can't feel the roughness of this thing with your finger, let's cut a little piece to look at under the microscope and compare it with a regular line, a number 10 line. Let's use our little gadget here. I'm going to take a blade, a tiny little glass and glue on top the regular line and the cutting line. Under the microscope, I'll use the lowest magnification and a light from above, not below, for better visibility. The difference here is really crazy. I can record with this microscope. So look, what you're seeing here is line 10. You can see all its little threads. It looks like a rope from afar with all its fibers. When we look at the line with the cutter on the side, it looks like a stone. It has a bunch of little stones. It looks like sandpaper. I don't know, that fulgurite, right? Lightning strikes sand, creating glass. The glass fibers are invisible on the line, making it extremely rough. As a child, people would grind lamp glass, mix it with glue, and apply it to the line stretched out in the street. That formed what we called serral. This line likely isn't that. It must be that type of Chilean line, which is already made in some kind of backyard industry and is sold just like that. Here they use other things besides sand, glass, there can be aluminum oxide, there can be some very abrasive item like what is used in sandpaper. But we will never know exactly because it doesn't come with an Anvisa inspection for us to know what's inside, right? But just from the image you can tell that this going on the skin must not be at all peaceful. If you've never seen cutting line under a microscope, give this video a thumbs up. Now what's the idea here? It's to test what things this line is capable of cutting. Many people still use this type of fishing line because they are unaware of its dangers. They believe it's safe since it doesn't cut and doesn't seem that hazardous. What we have read about the accidents is that usually either the kite is too low or already fallen, the person is passing by car, motorcycle, on foot, passes the neck through the line or the arm, something like that, so that the person ends up covering a large stretch of the line. The line scrapes the person for a long time. That's enough to cut even if you use the 10 line. We first thought of putting the line on this hacksaw. I'll wet the line's tip to tie a knot and attach it to the hacksaw. Yes, it can cut polyvinyl chloride pipe. The pipe has been cut and pierced, but it's unclear if it will be cut completely through. Check the damage. And I already find this impressive, but it's very different from what happens in real life. We're using roughly 30 centimeters of line, and more than just this length can hit a person if they're riding a motorcycle. 
80 kilometers per hour. If the person hits a line that's on the diagonal there, they will cover it in one second. 22 meters, then no time for the little stones. That are here to wear out as it happened now, it will cut much more than it cut in this test. So, to make it more realistic, we set up this thing, which is simply a saw made with cutting line. It's in theory, right? This scheme here are two pulleys that we cut with a laser. The inside is lined with insulating tape to protect the line, and a bearing is included for easier spinning. Finally, I'll secure the line ends with super glue and attach a battery powered screwdriver as the saw's motor. Shall we start off easy? Let's do it. Go ahead, Lucas. Wow, the styrofoam goes through like butter. I didn't even see it. Pool noodle. This is more violent than I imagined. Polyvinyl chloride pipe. The fishing line has burst and is tangled in the pipe, caught on hard material. The line splice is tangled, which wouldn't happen in reality as there's no splice when cutting someone. The line tore the polyvinyl chloride pipe. Now, let's look at some vegetables. The line keeps coming loose because the glue is failing, not due to bursting. Since the carrot is moist, it melts some of the glue, right? It dissolves the glue. Let's replace this line because it no longer cuts well, having become like a regular line. We replace the super glue with a little knot there. Let's see if the knot won't burst quickly. Shall we check out this pineapple? Oh look, it was easy. Let's check out the body. The knot tangles and loses abrasiveness due to the pineapple's water, causing it to burst. It would likely cut easily if it were a piece of clothing. Cutting the cloth so effortlessly in just three seconds made me nervous. Now, let's attempt to cut a leather glove with the one we're using. We can't start the game. This cowhide glove is a protective glove, perhaps the strongest one here. It's not thin or easily cut leather. Should we try cutting the leather scrap one made from scraps? Now I know that my glove doesn't help much, but it at least protects against the first cut for the first phase of the cut. But the leather scrap is even thicker than the cowhide glove I'm wearing, which is smoother. It's this outer part of the glove here, see? Scissors cut like paper. Then what do you think happens? Ignored the rope. Try three. This is very serious. It cut and burned three sturdy electricity cables at the same time. It didn't cut completely, but it severely damaged the copper. Again, the knot stripped, not the line. We had to stop and repair our machine. Oops, a lot of people complain that the line cuts car bumpers. We got a car bumper here, already a bit battered. Let's see if it really cuts. Shall we? Wow. It cuts car bumpers, gloves, clothes, electrical wires. But what does it do to our skin? I'll do two tests. First with coffee and milk. Second, more serious, starting with the sausage. Oops, it caught my glove. Luckily, it was at a point where my finger wasn't. You knew it was going to cut, didn't you? The shape is similar, but the consistency differs from a human finger. A chicken thigh with bone is more similar. If you dislike strong imagery, skip this part. I believe it will make a significant cut here. Will it cut through the bone? It cut skin, meat, tendon, and I don't know if it reached the bone. Once again here, wow. The meat cut effortlessly, like butter. Uh, the head of the bone here, all the tendons, and then the line broke. If you needed to see this to be convinced, that this line really cuts. It's seen. It cuts practically anything. I'm not going to stand here giving a moral lesson. I love kites. I think they're really cool. But cutting line is too dangerous. Lucas is here by my side. He didn't want to say anything. At the beginning of the video anyway, but he has a scar on his neck. Once, while riding a motorcycle, a line caught his neck. Luckily, what we see in this video didn't happen to him. This video alone won't end the use of Serral or Chilean line, but it's worth considering if you ride a motorcycle. The small antenna that tangles in the line should stay in front. Understand. 
For a potentially life-saving video, check out the one showing what can happen with hand sanitizer in a restaurant. There are several very dangerous explosions and it's relatively easy to avoid.